All right, so we're going to talk about using direct mail in maybe ways that you haven't thought about using before. Um, so a little bit about my background. I told you I'm a real estate broker, and I've been doing this since 1985. So think back to 1985. What did we have to promote ourselves in 1985? Actually, what didn't we have? We'll start with the Internet. We didn't have the Internet. We didn't have fax machines. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have car phones. I think we had carbon paper back then, didn't we? Yeah? Is that okay? So when I was new to the business, I basically had three options. Direct mail or direct media, door knocking, or cold calling. We didn't have any do not call list back then, no rules around that. So I decided, because I didn't have a lot of money, couldn't afford print media early in my sales career, I decided to door knock. And so I would go door to door, I'd hit 300 houses, I'd walk through the hills of Orinda in a geographic area that was given to me by my broker, and every six weeks I'd start over. I'd go through it, come back, start over again. And I used to hand out a printed newsletter. Okay, So when you talked about sharing something virally in the old days, if somebody liked what you had at the front doorstep, how would they possibly share that with somebody? Get in their car, go down to Kinko's, make copies of it, and hand it out to people. Well, did they do that? No. And that's the benefit of email marketing, internet, social media, is that it's really easy to share virally when you're using something digital like that. So anyway, as I began to make more sales, I began to have a marketing budget. And so I made a shift. I still did door knocking, but I started doing a lot of print media and direct mail as well. And so I learned, I cut my teeth on direct mail marketing years ago when it was pretty much the only way to reach somebody in their mailbox was through that or by running an ad. <clears throat> and so if you think back, junk mail got out of hand up until about 10 years ago when, or 15 years ago when email started to come into play. We started to see a lot less junk mail in the mailbox. So the point is is that when you're marketing, you don't want to have a lot of competition for one thing. That's that's the ultimate. And your point earlier is well taken as you open your up your mailbox these days and you tend to find less of it. It still comes but not anywhere near the magnitude or volume that it once did. And so as I evolved in my career about 10 years into it, I hired a coach in Southern California who had a concept. The concept was rather than going after only new business, door knocking, cold calling, print media, direct mail, if you've been in business a while, you have what? You have a database, a customer list of all the people that know, like, and trust you. And the statistics that you shared with us earlier about it's cheaper and better to take good care of what you already have than it is to spend a ton of money trying to get something you don't have yet, which is a new customer, is true. So I built my business from the mid-90s to now based on cultivating referrals and repeat business from my satisfied customers. And the goal is to turn those folks into raving fans. A raving fan will go out and promote you. You can't stop them. They just, they're so high about you and your product and your services that they're going to tell everybody they know. And now with social media and online marketing, it makes it a lot easier for them to do that. <clears throat> so one of the tools that I used to use was the good old-fashioned thank you note. How many in the room here send out thank you notes? Great. Thank you notes have become kind of a dying art, if you will. They used to be prevalent back, you know, before the 80s and all that, but they've kind of died off, haven't they? We've kind of been insulated from that. We don't see them very often. That's why thank you notes and direct mail and greeting cards have more punch now than they ever did because they're personalized, right? They show the recipient that you've slowed down, that you've taken the time to reach out to them in your own handwriting and you've made it personal. So when you make it personal, your engagement is much higher. Would you agree with that? Okay. Does anybody use greeting cards? Yes? How do you use them? Okay. 
Mm. And how do you go about doing that? What's the process for you to do that? You, well, what, how do you actually, do you go to the store, pick out a box of greeting cards, sit down and address them and mail them and put well, stamps on them? Yeah. Costco, Great. Where we're to save money. We don't imprint them. We actually have bring all of our um, volunteers in who have benefited from our services. Yeah. They save them uh, with the uh, uh, Happy New Year or Happy Holidays um, and then sign their first name caregiver or okay. sister life. Right. So you have a team of people that does that for you, right? Okay. So I, do, I used to do it that way but on a smaller scale. I would have my assistant go out and when I sold a house or I got a referral, I would have my assistant go out, buy a card, and then I'd have her go buy a gift card, put the gift card in the card, hand address it, I would sign it, I'd write a note in it, she'd stuff it, put it in a stamp on it, <coughs> put it in the mailbox. And you know what? I've made a lot of connections that way, I've made a lot of referrals, I've made ultimately a lot of sales doing that. And I would never think to stop doing that. The problem was is that the cost of sending out that one card, when you really slow down and analyze what it took to do that, at $20 an hour, I'm sending an assistant to Rite Aid, back and forth, there's an hour, right? Then to go get the gift card, then to get the stamp, then to put it in. That was a $50 to $60 investment. It, had a re it has a return on an investment. But when I discovered this online greeting card service, it became a cheaper, better, faster. In other words, I didn't actually have to have my assistant do that for me at all. I could do it myself in my spare time, which takes about five minutes to log on online, create a greeting card, personalize it, put a gift card in it, hit the send button, and in four business days, it arrives in the mailbox, not as a postcard, but in an envelope that's addressed to them with the first class stamp on it. So when you think about that, I just took a 50 or $60 investment and reduced it down to about five bucks tops, maybe even $2 depending on what you're sending or whatever the cost of the gift card is inside of it. Make sense? You're shaking your head. Are you the accountant? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> In other words, using technology and blending the new, the digital, the online with the old school, having it arrive in a mailbox, first class addressed to them. In other words, if it looks like an invitation to something, what's your propensity to do with that? Do you know that Evite has one of the highest open rates on email? Why is that? It's personal, it's addressed to you, it's an invitation to something that you're probably interested in, right? It's fun. And so I used to send out postcards. I still do occasionally. The postcards don't come in an envelope, but postcards tend to take on the flair of junk mail, so to speak. When it comes in an envelope sealed with a first class mail or stamp on it, then the odds of getting it opened and paid attention to are greatly higher than that, right? So let me show you. 